because the the topic for the conference is on democracy, um, I was led to examine some factors that may contribute to democracy in China. So uh, while I'll mostly talk about uh, social economic modernization's uh, impact on China's public support for the government, uh, I will also touch upon uh, what I call the prospects for China's democratic transition. Um, the context is, you know, the um, uh, the question we often ask is, you know, after so many years of economic development, why is China not changing to a democracy yet? Okay, because um, uh, political scientists, uh, economists have studied the relationship between modernization and democracy, and have found that a uh, long, uh, long period of uh, social economic development uh, will heavily increase a country's likelihood of transitioning to a democracy. Uh, uh, but what we see in China is after 30 and almost 35 years now of economic growth, the government is quite, still quite in, uh, in, enjoying a high level of political support from the people. Uh, the, that level is declining, but the, the level is still quite high. So, so many people are asking, is the current political system going to uh, remain, or the current Chinese government is going to stay in power forever? Um, the quick answer is probably no. Okay. It, it, uh, the long answer is, is much longer, but the, quick, the short answer is no. Because social economic development uh, uh, often at the, at the beginning it often increased people's support for the government because the economy is going well, people support the government. But once uh, the level of modernization reaches a certain level, people start to uh, become critical, uh, become assertive. So people, uh, people's demand for, for political rights will increase. So uh, what we s will see in, in the data I will show is that the Chinese people are already now uh, increasingly demand political r goods uh, such as freedom and political empowerment from the government. So the challenge is how the government can manage these demands. If the government can continue to reform its political system to give people more freedom, to, to allow people for political uh, participation and inclusion, uh, the system is going to stay in power, but eventually uh, some kind of change will have to take place. Uh, so I'll give you some background, and, and this might be a familiar story for many of you. Uh, this is China uh, in the 1970s, uh, 70s, late 1970s, at the aftermath of the Cultural Revolution, uh, a small, small county town in southern China. Uh, it's called Shenzhen. Uh, I don't know many of you, who, how many of you know the name of the city, but it, this is how the city looks like today. Uh, I mean, 2005, I, I took this photo many years ago. Um, but today, is, this is how, the, how basically you can see how cities in China have transformed in the, in the last 30, 35 years. In Shanghai, uh, 2008, very old photo already. But just to show you, you know, the, the scale of change in China, uh, the d economic development. Uh, but also, you have to know that China is a very large country um, I realize this country has uh, more than one million people. Uh, uh, <laughs> no need to be polite. <laughs> uh, but uh, they are, I mean, people in, in China, people living in such a situation probably will outnumber this country. Uh, so, so you still have a large population that's uh, still quite, quite poor in terms of development. A lot of uh, social inequality, many, uh, many people living in the cities are enjoying a very low level of livelihood or, or social rights. Uh, the children, uh, many of them left behind because their parents were working in the cities. Um, but overall, the, 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 the trajectory for economic development is very clear in China. This is the measurement of uh, so-called middle class uh, population in China. Uh, it will likely reach about 500 million by uh, by the, uh, 2020 or 2026. Uh, this is what, I'm, what I said, the sound of the research that showed the relationship between economic development and 
likelihood of transitioning to democracy. You can see the this these lines, these lines showing the level of per capita income and the probability of changing to a democracy. Uh, this is different type of calculation, but this is all the countries in the world, excluding oil countries and pre, uh, former Soviet Union uh, countries. So China will fall in this this line. Uh, so you, you can see if the if the per capita income reach twelve thousand U.S. dollars, uh, measured in I think nineteen ninety uh, price, the likelihood of, of a country changing to democracy in any year is about 30, 30%, 35%. So a rich country is very likely to change to a democracy. Um, uh, some of you may know these two scholars, uh, but the uh, main argument is this. Uh, economic development will lead to affluence in material security, a lot of in information, uh, Facebook, uh, <laughs> Twitter, uh, media information, and social complexities. Uh, this kind of social in environment will lead people to form s values. Uh, they will value political rights, they will demand civil liberties, uh, they will demand accountable government. Uh, and if these values are guaranteed by institution, if, if government uh, designs institutions to supply uh, these needs, to supply people to uh, political rights and civil liberty and accountable government, and you have democracy, okay? So no matter um, what kind of institutions you de design, uh, if, you, if you meet people's demand in these areas, uh, basically your political system is uh, democracy. Um, so to show you the value change in China and, and Taiwan, uh, give, basically using Taiwan as an example, someone asked the question whether Taiwan will follow Thai, uh, China will follow Taiwan or Thailand. Uh, here is the answer. Uh, the question is, do you agree or disagree that government leaders are like head of the family, we should all listen to them? This is the measurement of how, how independent or how, how much uh, uh, accountability you think the government should, should have. Uh, or uh, do you just follow government? Do you, do you actually demand government to listen to you? Uh, in Taiwan, 1983, uh, you have 55 percent agree with this statement, but this de uh, people declined to uh, just about 30 percent by 20 by 2002. Uh, China, uh, China, 1993, uh, you know, rural Chinese, almost 80 percent hold such kind of attitudes or values, meaning the traditional Chinese people are very obedient, very uh, less uh, rights, they, do, they don't have the right uh, uh, consciousness, so to speak. But 10 years later, it declined to 60%, and the urban Chinese uh, was uh, more right conscious anyway uh, in 1993, and it also declined to about 50, less than 50%. So you can see the change of the of people's values about democracy, about people's relation to government. So in our study, our surveys, which is uh, actually the, this program's uh, center, headquartered in Taiwan, uh, the National Taiwan University, uh, a very uh, a group of very uh, strong political scientists uh, leading this project called Asian Barometer. And we measure people's so-called liberal democratic values. Um, and using this kind of questions, one is, uh, do you agree or disagree that people of different education levels should have the same amount of political rights? Uh, or people, do people should follow leaders? Just uh, uh, this question. Should we just all follow leaders? Uh, and whether people should be free to discuss any ideas without government approval, and whether it's good to have a lot of social groups, many groups in the society, uh, or should people, do people, uh, should people have any, many ways of thinking without uh, worrying about social chaos? So this, if you uh, agree with, uh, if you actually, if you 
uh, your responses to this question show whether you are democratic or you are authoritarian. Uh, and uh, combining these measurements, you can see uh, in Taiwan, uh, between different generations, these are generations of Taiwan citizens, the values are rising from older generations to younger generations. This is 2001 data, this is 2006 data. So newer generations, they are more democratic, uh, just put it simply, because of the social change, because social economic development. And similar trends in, in South Korea, uh, measured in two years time, 2001 and 2006. And the whole East Asia looking this way. Uh, the horizontal is the economic development level uh, measured by Human Development Index uh, measured in 2005 and the vertical level, vertical dimension is the liberal democratic value uh, measured around 2005 and you can see you have uh, advanced Asia, uh, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore and uh, developing Asia, China, Philippines, Malaysia, Thailand and these are uh, underdeveloped countries, uh, Cambodia and Mongolia, Mongolia. So basically the level of economic development and the strength of liberal democratic value is uh, very uh, nicely correlated to each other. Uh, so I'll show you some more uh, technical analysis. Uh, this is the uh, public support for the Chinese polit uh, political system and Chinese government uh, measured in 2007. Uh, so this is uh, the percentage of people saying they have a great deal or quite a lot of trust, confidence in the national government. And here's the support for the political system. Uh, whatever is false, our political system is still the best for our country. So you still have about 74% people agree that China's political system is good for the country, is best for the country. And in 2011, uh, thinking in general, I am proud of our political system. Uh, you have more than, 90, more than uh, close to close to 90% saying yes, saying uh, agreeing with this statement in China. Uh, a citizen like ours, even if it runs into problems, deserves the people's support. Uh, about more than 70%. Uh, I would rather live under our system or of government than any other that I can think of. Uh, you have more than 80%. Uh, support this statement. Um, over time, uh, 1993, uh, in terms of the whatever is false, our political system is still best for the country. Uh, 1993, you have uh, about 60% saying uh, strongly, strongly agree. Uh, so, sorry, strongly agree is here, about 8%, and some will agree about 60%. 2, 3, 3%. 2002, it, this increased, uh, but by 2007, it started to decline. Okay, so th that's the trend. You, you, 1993, it's about here, then it rise and then decline. So what can we explain people's support for the Chinese government and the Chinese political system? One is, of course, the economic performance. Chinese people are benefiting from this a uh, long period of economic development, Ch people's living standard increased, and China's international status increased. Uh, so this contributed to people's confidence in the government and support for the system. Um, but uh, I think by after 2008, after 2007, 2000, uh, 2008, uh, one is the economic development is slowing down itself. Uh, I, it's still increasing, but the speed is slowing down. Uh, the other is because 30 years of economic development made people, people are used to the economic development. People think economic, good, eco good economy is taken for granted. So it doesn't quite make people happier for the, uh, about the government. Uh, but more because now people have more de democratic values. People are sec materially secure. People uh, People feel they need more political rights, they, they need accountable government, they need responsive government, so on and so forth. So this process lead to re decline in the support for the government because modernization lead to liberal, liberal democratic values and democratic values means the people will support the, the one-party government less. Okay, so I 
you know, there are many uh, technical details, but but um, uh, I think some of some students must can uh, must uh, know statistics and can read this table. Uh, basically, uh, it's showing uh, political political performances of the government, such as whether government is responsive, whether uh, government is now giving more freedom to people, and whether government is uh, um, more accountable horizontally and more accountable vert vertically are very important factors for people's support for the government. Uh, and, and you can see, uh, in, in terms of trusting government institutions, uh, the people having a great deal of trust in the government has declined from 2002, uh, 61% to 2011's 50%, and trust in the, in the party has declined from 69% to 53%. Um, so the, the trend is, uh, in the last 10 years, it has been in decline. And uh, some further analysis show, really, this uh, citizen's perception of whether they are empowered and how much freedom they have are the two most important political variables that make people trust the government. Um, I, I think this just to give you the idea how, how uh, technically how these conclusions are, are drawn. Uh, and more, more, uh, uh, more common sense is to look at the generational decline from the older generation who were born in 1930s and 1940s, 1950s to the, those who those who are born after 1980s, you can see the support level of the government is in decline. This is the uh, rural uh, urban Chinese. Urban Chinese support the government less. Rural Chinese support the government more, but um, basically younger generations are supporting the government less. But don't be too uh, eager yet, because uh, if you look at across the, uh, globe, the globe, uh, the support for government is still very high in China, comparing to Australia, Brazil, Finland. I think Estonia's level of trust is a, a par probably close to Finland's, uh, uh, and Germany, India. Uh, so only Vietnam's people trust their government more than the Chinese. Um, um, so, so the I mean the level is in decline, but still uh, it's quite manageable for the government. Uh, and if you think of the level of development, uh, China comparing uh, in terms of per capita GDP, China is now is about 6,000, uh, Estonia is about 20,000, uh, Taiwan a bit higher. Measured by PPT, uh, PPP, sorry, China is about 10,000, 10, Estonia 20,000, and about 40,000 for Taiwan. And the Human Development Index, China is just about 0.7 versus Estonia's 0.8 and Taiwan's 0.93. In terms of ranking in the human development, China is, is about 100 place. So you, you remember the image I showed earlier, the very poor woman living in a very uh, poor house. You can understand why overall China's development is still very low. Um, so the, I mean, the, the social condition for for democracy is still developing in China. Uh, still, we still need to, to wait. Um, that's uh, what, I, what I have prepared. Thank you very much. Um, I'll just ask one question. <laughs> so um, I think uh, what, uh, what your presentation basically proves the idea that um, modernization tries for democracy, although it, in China it will take um, more time. Yeah. It's a long process. Mm -hmm. But um, the question is um, that if Chinese, but Chinese government can actually, can it actually keep up with economic growth? Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, what are other options for Chinese government to mm -hmm. uh, you know, regain the trust or keep mm -hmm. the trust actually at the high levels? I think the, at the moment it looks like the now they they have adjusted the target to about seven to eight percent each year, comparing to ten percent in the last say twenty thirty years. So uh, the uh, majority of economists' view is this seven 
percent rate can continue for another 20 years. So that way, China will reach kind of a high income level country. Probably China will be per capita, China will reach th this country's level. Uh, then you can manage economic uh, political transition. I think that will be also the ideal way when you have a affluent society, a majority of people living in the cities and majority of people having uh, higher than senior high school education, then you can manage a um, peaceful orderly transition. But if the, uh, so, so we are we're actually, I think it's a, it's a, it will be a disaster for China and the neighbors countries if the economy actually doesn't, it doesn't grow, continue to grow. Uh, so we just hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, if it happens, I think the, uh, the whole system will collapse. So, uh, but the other aspect is in the last 20 years, besides economic development, the political system is also adjusting uh, slightly to give people more freedom, more space. So that also win people's support. 